Well, good morning again, everybody. Praise God. What another good week we have ahead of us. Hallelujah. Let me just say this before I begin. Some of you like to laugh at my uh, black shirt. Uh, it's not my black shirt. It's my black shirts. Uh, these are my workout. I call them my uniform. My workout, I've got like 20 of them that I bought them at <laughs> Walmart for about $5 a piece so I can work out in them. And, and uh, this is what I wear just about every day. These are my T-shirts. I wear the black thing. As Juan likes to call me Johnny Cash, um, I like to wear them. And so, and I've got my hat on today because it's morning and my hair's, a, I don't think you want to see it. It looks like a fright. So uh, I've got my hat on. And, uh, and sometimes I make two or three of these at a time. So I get to study them and get on a roll here and have time to record them. So with that being out of the way, uh, I do own more than one shirt. And this is one of several. So for those of you that are caught up in my wardrobe or the lack thereof, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Maybe I'll change my uh, color for you tomorrow. <laughs> praise God. All right. Uh, let's open our Bibles to Proverbs 27. We've been going through Proverbs, and I'm only taking one or two Proverbs, basically, out of each one of these lessons. But we're building, uh, just using it as a foundation. We use other scriptures to to strengthen it and to validate it and to verify it and to affirm and confirm it. So Proverbs 27, I want you to look at verse 6. It says, wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy multiplies kisses. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy multiplies kisses. I am naming this little sermonette this morning, little devotion, Kissers or Cleavers. Kissers or Cleavers. Who are you surrounded by? Are you surrounded by kissers or cleavers? If you turn in your Bibles, if you have them with your, get in your phone, like I'm reading off my phone right now, Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, talking about Ruth, amen, and Naomi. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord, excuse me, may the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. My goodness. Man, do you have friends like that? Yeah. My dad looked at me when I was a little boy, and I think I've shared this with you before, but he held up his hand, and he says, Son, make sure I'm in the screen here. He says, If you can count this many friends in a lifetime, true friends, not acquaintances. He goes, You have a, thousands of acquaintances, but, not, but if you have this many friends in a lifetime, you are a blessed man. And I used to think, Dad, you're nuts. I mean, I've got that many friends just in my homeroom class. But I've come to find out that to be true. People that you can count on, the kisser or the cleaver. Look what, the, what Ruth said. She goes, even when I die, <laughs> Naomi, you've been so good to me. Even when I die, I don't even be buried far from you. <laughs> Boy, I think there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, right? How many friends like that do you have? Who could you count on today? And, and the thing is, is that whoever you can count on today are the people that God, listen very carefully to me, God loves you. That's why he can correct you. Husbands love your wives, all right? Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he might wash it with the washing of the water by the word. You don't get to correct anybody until they know you love them. 
Folks, do not take condemnation or correction from people who don't love you. Don't allow people who are jealous of you or have fought with you, don't allow them to establish whether you're going to have joy or not. Amen. Don't receive condemnation from individuals who do not love you or correction. Now, if there's any truth to what they're saying, okay. If there's any truth, ask yourself the question, is there any validity to what they're saying? If there is, then okay. But realize this, God, the Bible tells us, you who are spiritual, restore people who have made graphic mistakes. Restore them with a spirit of meekness. A true friend doesn't bring railing accusation. A true friend is a person that loves at all times. A brother is born for adversity. I mean, this is the relationship that Ruth had with Naomi and Naomi with Ruth. I mean, Naomi took her in, and, and I'm telling you, Ruth was, was so, so gracious or so, so uh, uh, grateful. Naomi was gracious, and Ruth was so grateful that she said, man, whatever. I mean, she wouldn't lift a finger to hurt <clears throat> Naomi. If, if Naomi was a serial killer, she wouldn't have raised a finger to hurt her. This is gratitude for people who have, who have been good to you and taken you in and loved you and been kind to you. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Look at Proverbs 27, 6. Wounds from a friend can be trusted because they love you so much that if they have to say something to you, they know it will hurt your feelings. They know it's not going to be pleasant. So when they bring it up, they won't have barbs on the end of it. They won't be, they won't be malicious. They won't be, it won't be any malice. There'll be no stinger, no toxin, no poison to it, no bite. Of course, it's not, it's not pleasant to hear things. It's not pleasant, but only people, this is why God, for God so loved the world, the only reason God has the right to correct them it's because he loved them and gave something for them, gave someone for them. So I'll allow God to judge me, but the Bible says judge no man. God's our judge. There's one, as Jesus, or Paul said, there's one that judges me. <laughs> Amen. There's one that judges me. I don't even judge myself. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Wounds from a friend. A friend will be the, will say things to you that will keep you from embarrassment. And even though it may embarrass you just a little bit when they tell you that, it'll save you from embarrassment before you go out and other people see it. A friend's wounds, they may hurt you a little bit and say things like, that relationship's bad for you. That thing's not good for you. But the only people that... that when people are wrapped up in deception, the only people they will receive anything from, if indeed they will receive anything, will be from someone who's been there for them, been that, that's been there for them every inch of the way of their life. And so that's what we need to know today, and we don't want to spend a lot of time on it today, but, but I'm telling you, the friendships that you have that are so... That, that people that believe in you so much and they're so good to you, value those friendships. He says their wounds can be more trusted than an enemy's flattering of thousands of kisses, telling you how wonderful you are. Have you ever dealt with people that tell you how wonderful you are, but behind your back, they say all manner of things against you and then you find out they've been talking about you and how much it hurt you? When your friend says things that hurts you, you can realize it's only for your good they say that. When the enemy starts saying things about you, it's for their benefit. Amen. And so God is saying you can trust the wounds of a friend because it's like the father chastises those that he loves and every son that he receives. And if you be without correction, you're not a son. He says you're a bastard and none of his. You have to submit to it. You have to submit to the correction. But notice this, God's the one that's been so good to you and loves you so much that, that when he starts to correct you, and, and, he, and, and he, if you be without chastisement, meaning you can turn, you can turn your back on a friend who's, who's wounded you with telling you the truth about something that will try to help you 
But if you turn them away, what do you got left? Again, God's not saying things that are trying to take things away from you to hurt you. And your friends aren't trying to say things to you that, that, that when you've done something or you're in a, 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 a bad way, and they say, okay, it's time to snap out of it. Amen. And that's, uh, there's a lot of things come to mind. I just always go through my filter to see what I'm allowed to share and what I can't share. But I've had, I've had my own family members do that with me. I get in a bad way, and they come and go, you know, my kids will go, Dad, okay, what's, what's going on? And snap me out of some things. And, and, and I needed that, and I'm glad they did. And it actually saved me because I was going down a road of, uh, of just wrong, I don't know, just allowing myself to be beat up. And, um, and, they, and they had to come to me and, and, and my oldest daughter and say, Dad, okay, Dad what's going on? What's going on? Because they just knew. And, and I thought this, and when my wife had died, she was the one that was there for me like every single day, helping me get through things, find passwords. And so she had laid her life down for me so much that when it came time for any correction or just help straighten out my, you know, I was going through a lot after my wife died. Um, and she was the one that it didn't, it hurt when she had to say, hey, it's not you, Dad, what are you doing? It was embarrassing for me, but you know what? I could receive it from her because she was the one that was being, I mean, helping me get through everything that I was facing at that time. Kissers or cleavers, what are you surrounded with today? People that tell you what you want to hear to your face, but are people that you cannot trust, uh, people that take your weaknesses and expose them, or people that love covers a multitude of sin. But it doesn't mean that love won't confront you that love won't um, ask you to, if you're okay, and to point out some things in your behavior or the modified, the, the change in your behavior. A friend is like a side view mirror. They just, they're not just people you enjoy life with, they're people that also are protective. You, we need friends. Friendship is a responsibility, and when we and I'm choosing these words, but there, when you find out how few friends you really have, it really will cost, cause you to value what friends you have left. Amen? I remember Oral Roberts, I'll close with this saying, Oral Roberts, when I went to Oral Roberts University, he was teaching a, our class on the Holy Spirit, and he said, um, I'm a wounded man, I'm a scarred man. And he says, the armor of God has things for your front, but there's nothing, there's no covering for your back. And I've had many brothers put a, come up and embrace me and put a knife at my back. And he had tears. He was in his 70s, I, I think, probably at the time. And he had tears running down his face. And people, and his wife came up, Evelyn Precious came up and says, oh, Oral, they don't want to hear that. These kids, and there's like a thousand people in this class. We're in a big auditorium. And, he, and, they, oh, and the kids started laughing because they thought it was cute. She stood up there, but I didn't laugh. I was sitting on that audience and I looked at a, at a patriarch of God with tears running down his face and I should have known at 23, 24 years of age that if they'll do these things to an old Roberts, they're going to certainly do them to you. And Jesus even said, if these things be done in a green tree, imagine what will be done to the dry. So I say these things to you today. I have, I've been fortunate to have some really good friends and like I said, when my wife died, they were there for me in an amazing way. Not only family, sometimes your family, your friends are there more than your family is. Um, but boy, when you have them, they are treasures. Treasure your friends. Their wounds to you can be trusted far more than the flattery of someone's trying to get in your good graces. Appreciate who you have. Appreciate the friends you have. Tell them what a wonderful, tell them how much you appreciate them. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much you need them in your life. They are your side view mirrors. They're there for your entertainment, your joy, but they're also there for your protection. They've got your back. Amen. We love you. Have a great day in Jesus. We'll see you tomorrow.